after exoneration from the independent investigator yesterday. Uh, do you know what? I'm going to leave uh, politics to others today. Nicola Sturgeon headed to Holyrood to face down her critics this morning as a committee of MSPs concluded she had misled Parliament, but only by a majority vote divided along party lines. How can Parliament have confidence in the words of a First Minister whose words have been found to be false? The honourable thing would be to resign. Nicola Sturgeon had previously said she'd accept the outcome of the Thank committee, you, the First not anymore. If you think you can bully me out of office, you are mistaken and you misjudge me. If you want to remove me as First Minister, do it in an election. The cross-party committee heard months of evidence on the Scottish Government's failed investigation into sexual misconduct allegations against the former First Minister Alex Salmond. Above all, I'd like to thank my friends and, and family who was acquitted of 13 criminal charges a year ago today. There was much the committee agreed on, but on the key issues of whether the First Minister misled Parliament, its SNP members objected. I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. By majority vote, the committee concluded Nicola Sturgeon misled Parliament in her account of whether she offered to help out Mr Salmond. She insists she didn't. And also by majority vote, they concluded it was hard to believe she didn't know of concerns about Mr. Salmon's behaviour earlier than she had let on, which Miss Sturgeon denies. If you're a voter, who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe her political opponents who say she did mislead Parliament, or are you going to believe the independent adjudicator who said she didn't mislead Parliament? I think if you're a voter, you're going to look at this whole sorry affair and conclude that there's something far wrong in the Scottish Government. Now, do you accept that finding, which is at odds with your own finding, that Nicola Sturgeon did not mislead Parliament? The, the committee has come to its own view on this matter, and our view was she did mislead the committee and did mislead Parliament. This process should have been about the women who were failed by the Scottish Government. But there's a feeling here that the conspiracies, the leaks, the finger-pointing have all left a really bad taste around Scottish politics. And it's not yet clear, even as we go into an election campaign, who, if anyone, will pay the price. Will there be repercussions for the people in this report who have failed those women, people I, within the Scottish Government? I'm not responsible for implementing the report, but my expectation would be, first of all, this report would be taken, and is taken, incredibly seriously. And secondly, it would be acted on. Now, therefore, I would expect, in it being acted upon, that there would be actions taken. But what, what, what do you mean by actions first. taken? Well, I don't know, because I'm not responsible for implementing what, what this report. What actions might be taken? Well, I don't know. I'm not responsible for implementing this report. What I do believe, however, is the report says serious things which require action to be taken. And that is important. Also important, the words of the women themselves who made the complaints of sexual misconduct within the Scottish Government. It is a sad indictment of what happened at that time that such behaviour was permitted and a blind eye was turned to it, they said. And they allege the Scottish Government not only let them down, but cut them off. One said, I was quite taken aback by the lack of contact and support from the Scottish Government after the conclusion of its process. We were basically just dropped. In the end, Nicola Sturgeon stormed through the no-confidence vote, a victory that rounds off one chapter, at least, of a sorry period for Scottish politics in which there were many more losers than winners.